Hi there, welcome to the latest episode of my 10 minute moan. And the topic of this 10 minute moan is the maddest story I've ever done about this ferry, the Glen Sanox, because it isn't actually as green as they've been toiling us for about seven years. So unless you've been living in the moon or under a rock, you will not know that about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, the Scottish government decided to, through CalMac, um, have two new ferries ordered. And they um, were originally meant to be under £100 million pounds for the two, and are currently over £400 million pounds for the two. They launched them about seven years ago, and they're still not in service, because when they launched them, they had no engine, no windows, and just a farce, right? Nicola Sturgeon went down with a big bottle of smash, ah, and everybody that sails in her, and the thing couldn't sail. Okay, all that trumpet and fanfare. Seven years later, the thing's still not in service. It's meant to be in service in January. Anyway, that's a sort of story. And all along, what Nicola Sturgeon and Hamza Yousaf and Swinney and everybody connected with SMP has told us, aye, but these are going to be the greenest ferries ever. And it's going to be part of Scotland's new green transition. And they're going to be fantastic and cuddly and they won't kill the planet. <clears throat> That's what they've told us. Every time somebody's mentioned delays or rising costs of these things. And it turns out that that was a lot of shite, right? The carbon footprint of the long-delayed new green ferry will be far larger than the 31-year-old diesel ship that usually serves the route between Scottish mainland and the island of Arran. Right? On an emissions analysis by CalMac has calculated that Glen Sanox will emit 10,391 equivalent tonnes of CO2 per year compared to 7,732 for the Caledonian Isles. That's the ferry. It's 31 year old. Right. Now, see before, so that's what about 30% more, right? If this thing carried double the amount of people, you could understand that that would be no, probably no bad. Probably makes sense because you're not doubling the amount of emissions. However, it's not carrying more than 30%. It's nowhere near that, right? It's arguable it will carry any more. So it's a lot of bollocks. The dual fuel ferry has more car capacity but requires larger engines which also emit methane, a greenhouse gas with a far greater global warming effect than CO2. This is because of the, the this meant to be this new fantastic dual engine thing. One half you can run on normal diesel and the other engine runs on uh, liquid petroleum gas which produces methane. So this is how they've been telling us it's greener because the, this LPG bit. But the, the LPG bit you can't actually use when you come out the dock and you can't actually use when you get closer to the pier because you've got to turn it on and off. You've got to switch if you can be bothered. So you would go leave the dock under diesel, sail the middle bit under the LPG and produce methane and then switch it again to diesel. Now, I don't know why, but you cannot leave dock under the methane, uh, under the LPG, right? So... They probably just run it in diesel, right? And that would be worse than the, the, um, the existing ferry. <clears throat> so this is the, the, the sort of bollocks we've been told, right? Anyway, where did I get to? The ferry's procurement agency, CMAO, which owns the ship, said the comparison was inaccurate as Glen Sanox is a larger vehicle. Well, yeah, it's a larger vehicle. It's not 30% larger. But you've got 30% worse. Uh, CO2 is getting pumped into there. So it's actually less green than the one it's replacing. One expert, sorry, the size of Glen Sanok is a factor in its carbon footprint, but so too is it LMG, sorry, I says LPG, LNG fuel, which is less climate friendly than previously claimed. One expert in transport emissions told BBC that if the upstream carbon costs of importing LNG from Qatar is included in the emissions calculation, it might be better just to run the ship in diesel after all. Professor Tristan Smith from the Open, sorry, University Co College London's Energy Institute said, in the best case scenario, there's a negligible benefit of using LNG. And at worst, there would be a deterioration. It would be worse. Right? It's, no, it just blows my head. Right? Because the one thing I've always been climbing on, yeah, but it'll be greener. 
Glenn Sammock is the first ever ferry built in the UK capable of running both LNG and marine gas oil, diesel, a low sulphur type of diesel. At its launch in 2017, the first, this is launched and it, it stuck, you know, when it day one is now. First Minister Nicola Sturgeon said it would contribute to Scotland's world leading climate change goals. Well, it's, it's making them worse. But the LNG technology also added complexity. The Ferguson shipyards had to overcome many engineering and regularity challenges before the ship was delivered last month. Years late and well over budget. And by the way, still on service. The size of the ship also means it cannot berth at the usual mainland harbour at Ardrossi until a major redevelopment takes place. When running an LNG, the CO2 emissions are up, are, sorry, are up to 25% lower than the comparative diesel. But this is almost entirely off, offset by the larger engine size and higher fuel consumption. Because basically you've got two big engines in the one boat. Now, the boat's heavier, more, needs more fuel to go. So it's like counterproductive. The second reason is methane. The LNG is most consistent, is the LNG fuel mostly consists of methane. A greenhouse gas with a global warming potential, 28 times worse than CO2. Small proportion of methane always passes through the engine's unbump and is released up the funnels known as methane slip. CalMac has calculated that methane slip adds the equivalent of 1,800 tonnes of CO2 per year. So if you took that out and just ran it in diesel, you're looking at a ship that would run about the same as a 31-year-old one that it's replacing. However, it's got a bigger capacity. So the footprint of each person is actually <coughs> better. If you, all you'd done in the first place was run it on diesel. And then it would get better again because the whole thing would be lighter, would get better fuel economy, and it would probably be even less than its smaller one that it's replaced. Does that make sense? Well, it does to me, but it doesn't to these crackpots because they have no sense. CalMax emission analysis carried out at the start of the year at the request of Scottish ministers almost certainly underestimates the ship's carbon footprint. Right? The figures are based on idle, ideal engine running conditions with m minimal methane slip. And CalMac acknowledges that in real life operations, emissions are likely to be higher. The analysis also does not factor in the so-called blowdown emissions of methane, which occur every time you the ship switches from LNG to running on diesel, which has to. That happens. That would be switched from the LNG to the diesel would be as it's arriving at port. It shuts that down. Now, I don't know if there's any of this slip when it goes the opposite way, you know, when it leaves the dock, run under diesel, and then switches to LNG. This only says it happens the other way. So, any methane left in the engine, crankcase, and fuel lines is automatically flushed into the atmosphere. So, yeah, it would only be working one way. And Calmark is yet to establish how much methane will be released. This is methane that's worse than CO2. The report also considers the carbon cost of transporting fuels from the LNG terminal in Kent. No allowance, however, is made for the upstream emissions involved in extracting the gas in Qatar and transporting it from Qatar all the way to Kent. We've totally ignored that. We've left that out of the equation. Right? We've not bothered about that. That didn't harm. Right? We just pretend that didn't harm. And I think this is a thing that we do a lot, to be fair, when we talk about um, green and climate change things. We just kind of forget, about, you know, when you make a car battery, for example, for these electric cars, there's tremendous carbon footprint goes into that, right? But we, we kind of just go, well, kind of, ah, but it's just a one-off, right? It takes years to counterbalance that, and sometimes, arguably, you'll never counterbalance the footprint caused and generated by building these things when you run them, but that's an argument for another day. But meanwhile, the chartered catamaran Alfred, which can carry 98 cars and cost only 14.5 million quid to build, has been operating successfully on the Aran route for the past 
20 months. With and advertised as the lowest emissions large ferry in the world. Right? 14 million. You could have got two for less than 30. We're at 400 or 450 million already for these two things. And they're not even green. They're arguably worse than the 30 year old boat they're replacing. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, please hit the subscribe and notifications button. Let me know what you think in the comments below. This will be a laugh, but more importantly, than any other. Unless you're a crackpot SMP minister that's been telling us for a decade that this thing's going to be the greenest thing in the world. No you or anybody that bought into it. No you, but... Everyone else, have a great day. Cheerio bye now.